This video is sponsored by NordVPN. What's up guys, salut, this is Alex, welcome back to the ramen series season 2 where I'm trying really really hard to get my ramen to the next, next, next level. In case you didn't know, I am deeply in love with the Japanese noodle soup called ramen. This dish, which appears very simple, actually conceals a world of complexity. I've bought the best ingredient, I've cooked broth for hours and hours, I've visited top tier noodle factories, I've learned from some of the best ramen chefs out there, I've even opened my own ramen restaurant for a night, in short I have left no stone unturned. I mean, almost. There is something I haven't touched on. Something that may seem trivial or insignificant to you, and yet this little something can literally enhance the experience of eating ramen. So all along this season, I have been served tons and tons of ramen. And there is something that I've noticed. They were all served in different bowls. I've seen all different shapes, and I feel like the shape might have an impact on the tasting experience. Over the past few weeks, I've been using bowls of different types and sizes to see which one would work the best for me. Unfortunately, and as it's all too often the case with me, I didn't find the right match for me. No problem, I thought, I just need to make my own bowl for my ramen. <laughs> Easier said than done. I took ceramic classes and started creating some bowls on my own. And I practiced, practiced, practiced. The intention is there, yes, but unfortunately I must admit that the technique does not fall. Long story short, it has proven to be way harder than I thought it would be. I mean, no problem, I thought again. I just need to find a ceramicist, a ceramic master, and I know exactly where to look. And that is when I discovered Florian Gatsby. Florian Gatsby is a very talented ceramicist based in London in the UK. He creates stunning hand-thrown tableware alongside a range of gorgeous artistic and sculptural pieces. This guy has an Instagram account that he feeds every day with splendid photos, a YouTube channel with millions of subscribers, also he's just released his own book on ceramics, you know, casually. Florian also finds some time to create hundreds and hundreds of bowls and mugs and plates all by hand which he then sells on his own website. In the end, I believe Florian is the perfect guy to help me figure out how much the ramen bowl itself can impact the tasting experience. Hi man, how are you? Found it. How yes, I did. You know what, I'm delighted to be there, man. How are you? Come in. I'm Sorry, the camera Sorry. is on already. I Just to capture. Wow, so nice, man. I absolutely love visiting the studios of passionate artisans and artists. There is always something sacred in these places, and Florian Studios is no exception. There is something very calm, but also a little crazy that emanates from this place. I, I came here. Yeah to understand something about how the shape of a bowl influence the eating experience. Mm -hmm. Let me just get my notebook and then I'll come back. Do, do, doing basic research on, on ramen bowl shapes, I've stumbled upon three shapes. The first one would be a round bowl. If you were to ask a child or me to draw a bowl, I would draw Precisely, this, yeah. half a circle basically, yeah, but, with, with a foot. Yeah. The, the second shape that I've seen, this one is super popular in mm -hmm. ramen restaurants. It has some sort of an S shape, there's a little curve, so your bottom lip just nests under it. And to drink, to slurp, it's amazing. And then I stumbled upon another shape. A shape that at first I thought was like less warming, less inviting in general. Mm. I it's guess these is, this is inviting, this is curvaceous. We know these two, yes. whereas this isn't something that most people have experience with. So okay. I would love if you could show me how you throw one of these. Okay, well, how about I do like a demo first and then you have a go? Sure, following your lead on this. Wonderful. Excited so, about this. Private class. Of course I immediately accepted, not only to receive a free masterclass from an industry master, but also because seeing how an object is made says a lot about the possibilities and all the constraints that governs the form of that very object. Basically, when I see how it's made, I understand it better. So, my, my right arm for this process is basically my anchor. Move the clay up and down. Mm -hmm. And this is a process called coning. If you imagine a bag of red lentils, all the lentils are all facing different directions. 
the process of coning the clay up and then down makes it so they all like align and knit together, which makes the clay easier to throw with. So next, I'm going to open up. So this creates the well. The next, we've got to start pulling up the walls. I use my knuckle on the outside, and these fingers on the inside are going to squeeze out, and then together they move. So but I can't just go from this thick to this thin. Okay. That's insane. That's they, why I need multiple passes. So yeah, you have to do multiple pulls. Clay is pushed in. And for this first pull, I'm never trying to get all of the height in one. I'm just evenly distributing it a little bit. So now I do another pass. So you're not spinning the wheel too fast? fast. Yeah. No, I mean, I tend to slow down as the walls get higher. So let's go for another. And you use the mirror. Well, if I'm above it, this mirror shows this, the perfect side view. Exactly. Otherwise, you've got to do this. You see a lot of yeah, pulses leaning back and it's painful and, and bad for your back. So I don't do that. So at first, you're just rounding the ball, right? So I start basically with bowls. I tend to throw them up, yeah. and then I, I'll gently ease them out into the correct shape. Right. So at this point, I'm pushing out from the inside. This one is just like a guide almost, right? The sponge. You're, le you're leaning onto this one. Oh, with the hand, yeah, exactly. It just provides some sort of resistance as well, because if there was nothing to push... The... Oh, so you're starting to induce like the, the S shape? Exactly. So wow. you, the, the curve down here still mm -hmm. needs to be finessed a bit. Okay, so, right? you, so you want it to be like a little, a little round there, maybe? A little rounder. So I'm just going to push from the inside. But then what I'll do is I begin shaping it from the inside, so now I'm going to be pushing out. I think a lot of people don't realise how, at the beginning, when you're centering the clay... Tons of force! It's a lot of pressure. At the end, there is a lot more finesse because it's the walls are thinner. The next thing I do is remove some of this excess clay from around the base. Now the rim, for me, is the most important piece of a pot because if I left this just, you know, square, it won't fit into the corners of your mouth in a mm -hmm. nice way. So this, which is just a chamois leather. And I just drape it over the rim, and I just soften it. Nice. But that's it, that's, that's it. the bowl really? finished. The last thing is the wire that I just... You don't use tons of water with the wire? You no, don't you don't have to. Think. Well, the thing is, this oh, clay... Sorry. Everything that I've been learning is so wrong. <laughs> no, but it might be wrong right for your clay. I'm gonna get back to these classes and tell this them. This is what he did. <laughs> this is Look, what worked. there's no water on the wheel. So, are you ready? Yes. I wanna see what you've got. And then it was my turn to show how I throw a ball. It's a bit like me showing Gordon Ramsay how I make my own beef wellington. You would have to be crazy to do that. I'm gonna either shame myself or my teacher now. <laughs> okay, and now a quick ad from our sponsor, NordVPN. So NordVPN has been sponsoring this channel for a while now, and I honestly can't imagine navigating the internet without it. Here, at the French Guy Cooking Enterprise, we work from different locations. Part of the team is in London, part of the team is in Amsterdam, part of the team is in Paris. We even sometimes hire freelancers worldwide for short-term missions. Meaning that we use a lot of services to transfer huge quantities of data from one country to another thanks to the magical wonders of the internet. Now, to secure our work and make sure that we don't fall into the trap of packet flooding, that's downloading high volume of data sent to an IP address that could overload our network and render the internet unusable, we use NordVPN to secure our access. It is easy to use, effective, and it doesn't slow down transfers or download either. We can all work from anywhere and still secure our data. So take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN. Right now, the best plan you'll find is through YouTube. You can get a two-year plan at a huge discount plus four additional months for free when you use my link nordvpn.com slash frenchguy. It is risk-free with Nord 30-day money-back guarantee. That is nordvpn.com slash frenchguy or click the link in the description below. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna either shame myself or my teacher now. <laughs> Speed, that's the most important thing. Keep your left arm stable. You just wanna push down right on the central. A bit of wobble. But I just focus on my, my hands. My hands are stable, the clay is stable. So should we go for the next stage? Yes, yeah, just yeah, opening. Yeah, yeah. But need to, to do a hold first. Yeah, that works. Now, this next pull is the hardest. Yes. Right. Just, this, it's because you're... This so, way. Yeah, yeah, this way, mate. No, you, 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 you should work here. You're right-handed. Yeah. Yeah. If you tuck that elbow into yourself, yeah. you'll have an easier time holding that arm to yes, your body. Right. Oh, no, there we go. That's better. That's much better. You really want to squeeze. And then okay. that is what you're lifting up. So you, All right. so you create the bulge first and then you move it up. So I think this bit of clay might pop off. Yes. Oh, no, we're good. 
Oh yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. No, but that's fine, because that was going to happen anyway. So, I, sh so I, sh I, sh I should put it higher? Let's focus on finishing and yes. shaking, so okay. we can make a mini ramen bowl. Mini ramen bowl is fine. What, what shape do you want to go for? Let's go for the straight one. Yeah, so, this is flat and this is flat. They're not pulls. I just push mm -hmm. the wall out from the inside against mm -hmm. this flattened hand. Okay. Obviously, if you push too hard without anything bracing, yes. the wall just collapses. Let's do one more. Perfect. Okay, 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 hang on. Hang on. Hold, yeah, hold, yeah. hold up. Okay, so you can remove all this excess clay from down here. Okay. Great. And then oh. on the inside, shape okay. it, make it nice and round. Great. Lastly, I guess there's finishing the rim, so I just use a chamois leather. What about this little wobble? It's like here for personality. No, it's fine, exactly. That's that's you. That's you in a pot. Okay, like my personality is very, very wobbly. Do you think? I think so. Well, see, well, as a potter, you make pots like that. Okay. What a very stable personality, if I may say so. <laughs> Whatever. Grab the wire. Yes, nice and tight. Go in front of the pot and then just drag it underneath the pot. Great, okay, and then you make your way over there. Amazing, okay. These have to dry, trim, dry, bisque fire, glaze, fire, cool down, <laughs> unpack. So and, and that's why you've prepared a few early on. I have. Luckily for us, Florian prepared three bowls in advance, each one representing a shape we had agreed on before. One round, another S-shaped, and finally the last one with straight edges. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, sorry. When he presented the balls to me, I realized how much out of reach his craftsmanship was. The balls are sharp, elegant, and very light. On each of them, there are details that you can only see if you look really, really carefully. The quality of the enamel, its color, which varies depending on the spot and the light, the tiny little variations in height and width. In short, they are little works of art. So this is the straight, straight edges. More or less. A there. little more modern, maybe. This is like the, the S shape. And this one is like the round one. That's the round one. I'm starting to imagine how ramen is going to look like in these Me bowls. too, I'm a bit scared. Why don't I take care of this? Yeah. And then we do ourselves a little ramen eating session. Sounds okay? brilliant. Because I'm looking forward to eating from this. Okay, let's just prep some food up. For the purpose of judging the three different bowl shape, we ordered a ramen kit from a local ramen shop. The style of ramen here is called tonkotsu. It's a hearty style with a rich and creamy broth. What I'm trying to judge here is the following. How does the design add to or detract from the presentation of the ingredients? I also want to see how the balls feels in the hand. Is it easy to pick up? How easy is it to sip from without spilling? What emotions can they convey? Strength or a sense of lightness? Of refinement? I'm, I'm just dying to know basically. Okay, here goes. Do you have a favorite? Visually, I think I like this one or this one. I, sure. I have to put more toppings on this one because otherwise the bowl feels a bit empty yeah. compared to, for example, this one. No, definitely. It, it feels like it's lacking toppings. They feel really hot. But, I mean, I'd rather a bowl felt hot than not. I mean, it, straight away, this one is easier to hold. I can lift it up with two fingers. But this one, I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk this because I feel like it would slip. Yeah. This one wouldn't slip because it's pretty wide. I, I reckon we should just eat them because like ramen it waits for no one. Mmm. How's the lip? Feels amazing. How's this one? It's okay, but you need to be careful. I mean, I, d I haven't tried drinking out of this one. I don't know. I can give it a try with this one. Yeah. It's less enjoyable than this one, but it's, it's, it's is probably it too better much? than this one. But also, I feel like Tonkotsu Ramen is notorious for being rich and over the top. Maybe it requires a bowl that can stand the bold flavors inside. I see, so something as, you know, Where? thicker, chunkier, heavier. You know, this for me, the mm -hmm. food looks better in here. We've got a more robust room. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's... It feels like it's suited for the dish. Yeah, right I think so. So in the end, which, which one you would go for? I would make this shape again, but with a, a slightly thicker rim and with a ledge that introduces um, this black band. I love like, the black band. I'm a big, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. I can see that. You, you feel like it's... it's, it's it frames it. It's, it, it frames presents it. it nicely. To be truly honest, this style of ramen is not my favorite. I much prefer lighter broth with a little more transparency. Now with that in mind, the shape that I enjoy the most would probably be something more minimalist, like the one with straight edges. The version Florian made is some sort of a beautiful dark red, but I feel like a lighter color would suit a lighter broth. I mean, in the end, I just realized that the choice of the bowl depends a lot on what it contains.
So at this stage, I thought the tasting session was over, but Florian reminded me that he had also made another custom bowl of his own design. Naturally, we had to try it out. This is crazy, man. First of all, the line that you've got. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I, you should be the one. No, to no. Talk well, about. on a lot of my work recently, I've been doing these indented rims that then flare out, but they're kind of quite angular. And then this indent is something to hold. The fingers go in. Yeah, exactly. It's, all, it's almost like made to be lift up. I love the indentation. It gives, it gives the bowl so much personality. The fact that it's slightly larger mm -hmm. makes the, the toppings look tiny inside. It does. So I think yeah. a, a smaller version could work quite nicely. It's very nice, man. Huh? Thank you, man, so much for all this. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming and it's been a pleasure to meet you and, and to have you cook ramen for me. I mean, what a treat. Thanks for allowing me to ruin your, 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 like, the, like the cleanliness of your studio. It's fine. It's a pottery. It's, it's, it's a it dirty place so anyway. It was so clean when we came in. <laughs> you, guys, you guys will leave up. and I'll be here scrubbing away for the next 30 minutes. Oh, sorry about this. <laughs> a farewell. Salut, mate. Salut. Thank, thank nice you so much. Bye-bye. See, See you, man. See you. Bye. I loved meeting with Florian. First and foremost, he's a very talented ceramicist, but also a great guy to boot. I basically came in with preconceived ideas on the bowl that I wanted before this visit, I would have bet that my favorite would be the S shape bowl. This is a classic. Now, after this session, I'm going more minimalist. Still with a bit of comfort, but way more minimalist. I want straight edges, clean lines. I want the ramen to shine. After what happened today, I truly believe that a perfect bowl exists out there. And if not, I'll just make it. <laughs> we we'll catch up in the next one. Bye bye. Salut. <laughs>